is why did you want to do Million Dollar Island in the first place? Oh, wow. Um, quite a few reasons. Um, one is I'm a bit of a reality TV nerd, so I wanted to see how it all works in the background. And um, number two is I'm sort of a bit introverted and I want to push myself out of my comfort zone. So nothing to do with the money. <laughs> yeah. So going into it, did you think that it was going to be like more like survivor based or more like Love Island, like a holiday or like what was your like expectations going into it? And maybe like how did that change? Uh, my expectations was definitely going to be more survivor based. Um, but as it went on, I, it was a lot tougher than I think anyone expected. It was um, really outdid Survivor in some ways. Yeah, so going into the show, obviously there's 100 people, so we don't get to see everyone. So who did you bond with um, on camera that we like didn't get to see like early on? Um, definitely majority of our log camp was really close, but um, Rachel and Lisa were probably my co closest friends on the island because we were in lockdown together as well. Why did you choose log camp? Because I've heard from some people they were like kicked out of camps and some camp was like <laughs> the last resort and then others they were just grabbing people and then just screaming on the beach. So what was your rationale for choosing log when you all looked like a hundred people just wandering the beach looking like characters from Lost. <laughs> um, log camp was pretty much everyone we we're in lockdown with. So we sort of knew each other a little bit. So we already had that sort of comfort zone where we knew a bit about each other before we went in. There was a few stragglers in there, but majority of people we'd already met. So obviously there was a lot of tension in your camp between Carla and Adrian, and that was like a highlight for like two episodes. So what was your thoughts <laughs> on that? And were you team Carla or team Adrian? And what was it like dealing with the drama? Um, yeah, the drama started pretty quickly because we had some really strong personalities in our camp. Like, AJ and Carla are survival experts, so we knew that was going to happen anyway. Um, I, being an introvert, I just take a step back when there's really strong personalities, so I just stood back and let it all unfold. I wasn't on anyone's team because didn't really know them that well to start with anyway, so I just let them go at it. <laughs> Any funny first impressions of people and did those change? Um, oh, yeah, of course. I mean, with 100 people, there's going to always be assumptions. And, I mean, I love the psychology of this game, so I loved watching people, how they change and who was putting on a pretense to be friendly with everyone to get further in the game and who was just being themselves. So there was quite a few people that um, I was unsure about, but after talking to them, I look, majority of people were really nice and really had a really good background. But there was a couple there for the game and for the camera. So that was quite interesting to see them change. Yeah. So obviously you said that you're a reality TV fan. So with the format of the game, did you have any like specific strategy? Or were you kind of just trying to play like low under the radar and move avoid all challenges and just float my way to <laughs> the end? Or did you want to be like aggressive or like what was your social game? Take me through like your in-game strategy. Um, I think I wanted to just see how everyone plays was playing the game or how they were dealing with it first. I think I wanted to go in a challenge. If I was going to go out, that's the way I wanted to go. So I was all up for it. I didn't care if I got put in a challenge. I thought they might get rid of all the oldies first, so there's a good chance I'd be up. But our camp got the spin of the wheel so much that I probably would have been protected a fair bit. Um, yeah, my strategy was just to be social, be friends with everyone, be under the radar, sort of be like their mother, and um, so everyone sort of likes you and won't put you up. Yeah, so what was it like having that giant feast after, like, starving for, like, nine days or 11 days or however many days it was at the time? Because you guys had the least amount of food out of everyone, I think. Yeah, we, we were rationing and we still ran out. I think we were surprised at the amount of food the other camps actually had that they were hiding. 
Um, so the feast, we thought it was a trick. We thought, oh, if we start eating, we're going to be like, there's something's going to happen. But then we just like everybody ate. Um, it was amazing, but you had to hold yourself back. Like if you were overeating, you're just going to bring it all back up. So sensible, just, yeah, not eat too much. So what is it like when you have that feast and then you have to realize, oh, my God, I have to pee at a camp versus camp challenge. And if we don't win, our entire camp is going to be decimated. Yeah, that first camp challenge was really emotional because I think there were people there that really wanted to get to the end and were really money hungry. Um, for me, I was happy just to be on a reality TV show. So, but I went in for the challenge and I'm like, if we go out this way, then we go out this way. But I mean, yeah, we won and that was just like the best feeling. That was the best challenge to be in, I think. Yeah, so was the challenge brutal? Because I saw the swimming challenge and they had to like pull you up the cargo net. So <laughs> that, was it brutal or like, because that challenge lasted for like two and a half hours. And what is it like just you're sit standing there watching, just hoping they solve this giant puzzle? <laughs> yeah, well, when I put my hand up for the swim things, I used to be a surf lifesaver. So I thought, oh, okay, the swimming bit's going to be easy. But then I didn't know about the rest of it, like climbing up the cargo net and pushing off the log and then swimming back in. So that was really tough. Um, and we didn't know what it was going to entail. Um, yeah, the puzzle, like we had three monsoonal raindrops while we were waiting there. It got cold. The wind blew up. We had a storm. So it was just like trying to cheer and trying to keep that enthusiasm while going, come on, solve this thing already. How great was uh, the celebration during the night when you guys ended up winning? Uh, unbelievable. Everyone was just on such a high. And to knock out Rock Camp, which were really tough competitors, they had some big, big physical threats in there. So for us, it was just like massive, like 20 people are gone and we're still here. So it was a huge relief. Yeah. So can you kind of talk about your relationship with Peyton? Because she did end up giving you her bracelet. And obviously with so many people on the show, we don't really get to see the relationships other than like camp relationships, like within the camp, like your camp relationships. So what was your relationship with her like? And were you maybe shocked that other people didn't give you their bracelet? Um, oh, Peyton and I, um, we actually met in Brisbane at our auditions and um, I told her a bit of my background and she was like really surprised and yeah, we sort of kept running into each other and we sort of did the whole trip over and everything and we just had a really nice uh, bond. We kept in touch and um, I was not shocked, but I was, yeah, a little surprised that she picked me. Um, but we did have, yeah, we did have a nice relationship and I wasn't surprised that no one else gave me their bracelet because I knew they were going to band together and try to give it to someone to knock bread out. So, Yeah, so how bad were the elements and, like, why did you quit? Because I heard that it was, like, medical or was it, like, starvation or, like, what was the reason? <laughs> um, I love... I love the whole thing. I would have stayed there till the end if I could have. It was, I love that sort of stuff. The starvation, everything didn't bother me in the slightest. I mean, we live in a caravan, so it wasn't a far stretch from that. Um, I didn't quit. Um, I don't like the way that I was portrayed that I quit. Um, I actually fainted and um, the medical staff said I had to go. So, um yeah, the, the way they, there's a few people that quit that didn't actually quit, which um, I was a bit unhappy about. I'm surprised just because of like fainting, because you can just get like water and get hydrated. Like, I'm surprised that it was such like, and not that it's a small issue. Fainting is obviously could be bad, but were you yeah. kind of like annoyed? Were you annoyed at them or like, were you like, I need to do this like for my health? Um, no, I understood why they did it because if they give me anything, it's an advantage in the game. Like if they gave me electrolytes or something, I'd be fine, but I would have an advantage over other people. Um, it wasn't my choice to leave. Um, uh, the medic said I, I need to leave. Um, I was just, I'd had really bad gastro for five days, so I had nothing and I was getting dizzy and just, yeah, fell over and that was the end of it. 
Yeah, so I forgot to ask before you quit. Um, obviously, Rock Camp got raided. Did you steal anything from Rock Camp? When I interviewed Titus, he told me that uh, he actually stole stuff before the survival challenge, and Carla told him to put it back, and everybody was pissed at Carla. So <laughs> um, did you steal anything, and what was that like? Um, yeah, I remember Titus coming to me and saying, Susie, should we go over there and take stuff? And I'm like, hell yeah, this is a survival game. And um, they brought it back and Carla and Kylie told them to take it back. And I was just like, I'm not going to get into this. I'm just going to sit back because this is the wrong decision. Um, I stole a jar of like sultanas and I stole an orange from the the feast that we had and buried it in the sand and actually forgot about it. <laughs> but, um, oh, yeah, we stole quite a few things that nobody would know about. <laughs> so what 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 came into your decision to give your bracelet to, I unfortunately am drawing a blank. Uh, John. John. Yeah, John. What, uh, what was your decision to give John your bracelet, maybe like over – um, Rachel and Lisa, who you said you were most closest to, um, and then Titus, because it seemed like just based on the edit, it seemed like you might have wanted to give it to him. But I mean, that's TV, so you don't know if that's accurate. Um, it actually was a hard decision. I wanted to save Titus, but also John has a terminally ill son and he really needed the money for treatment. And that was just far outweighed. Titus sort of saving Titus at the time and Titus had put himself up on the challenge so he'd sort of put himself in that position anyway um but John were yeah would have been someone I've always going to give it to Rachel and Lisa got bracelets when Rock Camp went anyway so they'd had two each if I'd given them mine they would have had four and it would have made them a target so um I stepped back from giving them and that they understood why and John would have only had three so he would have been a little bit under the radar anyway yeah so were there any love connections out on the island or like rivalries that we didn't get to see on camera <laughs> um there was a couple um there was a couple of the, that actually got together and they were interested in each other and I really honestly don't know if it went any further this is like island chatter so whether it actually went further or not i'm not sure i know a few people connected after the show so i don't know whether they're still together or not yeah so do you have like any fun behind the scenes stories maybe even like pregame or out on the isle out on the island like maybe like including yourself that you maybe want to share <laughs> um, I know when we were in lockdown, we snuck out quite a few times and went for a swim or went to the gym where we weren't supposed to. Um, we did steal a lot of stuff on the island. We stole all the garbage bags for shelter. We stole the producer's chairs, which we had to hide when the cameras came in. Um, yeah, we stole food from the buffet and buried it, as I said, and we forgot about it till like, we had a light bulb moment and dug it all up and ate it. Um there's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff that you didn't see, a lot of snakes and scorpions and spiders and monkeys and stuff like that, which they didn't film. But, um, oh, so much, yeah, so much stuff behind the scenes. Yeah, so after you get eliminated, do you have any fun stories from that? Because I heard that you got held up for a week because of Chinese New Year or something. Yeah, we were in Langkawi for, it would have been nearly a full week because Chinese New Year, they booked all the flights up. So uh, we couldn't get home. So, hey, I had a free week in Langkawi. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, and so my last question is, what do you take away from the show overall and would you do it again? Or what other show would you want to do? Because I've heard some other people want to do Big Brother, Survivor, Amazing Race. <laughs> um. Takeaway from the show is definitely the people that I met. I do it all again just to meet them, put the money aside. Um, the whole experience was just incredible because I love pushing myself, so I just loved every minute of it. And I'd definitely do it again, and I'd love to do, I think, The Amazing Race would be right up my alley. Yeah, well, I really appreciate you doing this, and I'll definitely let you know when this is up. Thanks, Connor. It was nice to meet you.
It was nice to meet you too. Bye.